how does an input that has a dimension of 64 by 1 by 28 by 28 end up as an output of 64 by 10? How does this component of this convolutional neural network change the dimension of this input to produce this output? And what are the properties of these layers or these components that affect the input's dimension? This is what we are going to discuss today. And we're also going to take this network, this convolutional neural network, and code it up in PyTorch and visualize it in a tensor board. So let's look at this and understand how it all works. This is CNN simplified, and let's start from the first step. So we have an input image of 64 by 1 by 28 by 28. The first question you might ask is, what are these numbers? These numbers, the first one, 64, represents the batch size. This is the number of images you are feeding into the network at a given time. The second one represents the channel. It tells us the kind of image you are feeding or you are using. In this case, a channel of one represents a grayscale image, which is aka a black and white image. For a colored image, we have a channel size or a channel of three, and that means that we have the RGB numbers. The 28 by 28 here represents the width and the height of the image in pixels. Now let's look at what happens when the image of this dimension goes into the convolutional layer one. Now also realize that we have convolutional blocks which is exactly the same set of component, the same set of components that repeats. So we have convolutional block one, convolutional block two. In convolutional block one, we have the convolutional layer. The first convolutional layer has certain properties that will affect the input dimension. And the property of interest is input channel and output channel. In this very scenario, we have the input channel to be one, it has to be exactly the same as the input channel, the input dimension, and the output channel, in this case, is 16. And this is all you need to know. What happens when the image goes into this, goes into this layer, then the channel size is going to adjust from 1 to 16. Every other thing remains the same. Although there is another property called the stride and the padding, in this case, the padding is one and the stride is three. In this scenario, everything remains the same except the channel. And what it means is that at the end of this network, we are going to have an output to be 64 by 16 by 28 by 28. Let's now go on to the second block and that is the ReLU. The ReLU block doesn't make any modification to the input dimension or to the image dimension. And it means that what goes into the ReLU block, which is 64 by 16 by 28 by 28, comes out exactly the same. Now the next block is going to be, or the next layer is the max pooling layer. The max pooling layer in a convolutional neural network is used to reduce the spatial dimension of the image. In this case, the image is going to go from 28 by 28 to a lower dimension. The properties of the mass pooling layer that performs this change is called the stride and the is called the stride and the kernel. And in this example, they are going to be two. With a stride of two and a kernel of two, we are going to have the width and the height of the image reduced by half. And what it means is that at the end of this max pulling layer, we are going to now have an in a dimension of 64 by 16 by 14 by 14. Okay, so this is what goes into the second convolutional block. I hope you are following. And if this has been informative, remember to subscribe to my channel, support me on Patreon, and also hit that like button below. What happens at the convolutional layer 2? At this point, we have an input to be 16, right? So we have the input channel to be 16, exactly the same input channel that is going in, and the output channel is also going to be 16. So this convolutional block that has the input channel to be 16 and the output channel to be 16 is not going to modify the input channel or the output channel. 
The batch size is also not going to change. The batch size is going to remain the same. Now, we also have a padding of one. And also, just like here, we have a padding of one. And a padding of one means that the ch there is no change made in the dimension of the image, except the change that is going to be made by the mass pulling layer or the change made in the channel. Without a padding of one, let's say we have a padding of zero, then instead of having 28 by 28 to 14 by 14, we may have 28 by 28 to 13 by 13 or 12 by 12. But that is something we are going to discuss at a different time. Now the second convolutional block, we have an output of 64 by 16 by 14 by 14. And it means that everything that passes into the, into the convolutional layer two, it produces exactly the same output as well. So let's now move on to the second ReLU. Again, ReLU in this situation, to keep it simple, it takes all the input and sends it, activates all the input exactly and sends it across. So nothing happens here, it just, it just passes everything across as it is. Let's look at the max pulling layer 2. The max pulling layer 2 performs similar actions as the max pulling layer 1. It's going to take the input dimension and it's going to cut it by half. And what it means is that we are going to be having a kernel here of 2 and a stride of 2. You can read in my website the explanation of these terms. But when you have a kernel of 2 and a stride of 2, it's going to cut the dimension of the image by half. And it means that the max pulling layer is going to be producing 64 by 7 by 7 by 64 by 16 by 7 by 7. So it's going to produce 64 by 16 by 7 by 7. This will be the output dimension from the max pulling layer. Let's now go to the flatten layer. What does the flatten layer do? The flatten layer do the flatten layer takes the input of dimension 16 by 7 by 7 and converts it into a flattens it into a one-dimensional vector, a one-dimensional tensor. And the procedure is very simple. It simply multiplies everything across. So let's see. So we are going to have 16, 64. At the end of this, we are going to have 64 by 16 times 7 times 7. So let me check. I mean 16 times 7 times 7. 16 times 7 times 7 equals 784. So the new dimension is going to be 784. So the flatten layer is going to flatten from 64 by 16 by 7 by 7 to 64 by 784. Let's now take the last layer in the network, and that is the fully connected, fully connected layer, aka linear layer. The linear layer is simply going to take this 784 and map it to the required number of dimension, and in this case, it's going to be 10. So in this case, what it means is that n is equal to 10. And what is n? n is the number of neurons in this fully connected layer. And it's fully connected because all the 784 inputs goes into each of the 10 neurons, and therefore it's going to do a linear combination of the 784 inputs producing 10 outputs. I explained this in AI and Neural Network for Toddlers. You can check the video on how linear combination works. So the fully connected layer is going to map this into 64 by 10. And what it means is that this fully connected layer takes an input feature of 784 and produces output feature of 10. The batch size, again, remains the same. And this is basically how 64 by 1 by 28 by 28 is converted into 64 by 10 as the output of this network. So this is how convolutional neural networks work. I hope this has been informative for you. And if you have any challenges whatsoever, feel free to leave me a comment in the comment box below. And also remember, if you are joining for the first time, please hit on that subscribe button below to subscribe. You can feel free to support me on Patreon or in other ways. 
and we'll see in the next part.